In today's lesson, we are going to talk about the transformation of exponential functions. Based on what you learned previously, we are going to talk about exactly the same thing, the transformation, if we stretch or compress along the x or y axis, if we reflect on the x or y axis, and if we translate along the x and y axis. Now the type of transformation, to summarize, are going to be either translation along the y-axis, which is represented by this expression, or if we are going to stretch or compress along the y-axis, which is represented by this expression, if we do translation along the x-axis represented by this expression and if we do reflection or we do compression or stretch along the y-axis. Let's assume your base function is given by f of x is equal to k exponent x where k is any real number except 1 or 0. Then after performing the above transformation, the transformed exponential function becomes a times k exponent b times x minus h plus k, where a is the coefficient which represents the stretch or compression, compression and also the reflection about the x-axis but compression and the stretch is along the y-axis now this coefficient b represents the stretch or compression along the x-axis and if it's negative then it's going to be a reflection about the y-axis h represents the translation to the right or left along the x-axis and k is going to be the translation up or down along the y-axis as you can see all the coefficients are exactly like before and they behave exactly the same thing the only difference is the base function now your base function is going to be an exponential function which if you remember is going to look like let's say something like this one or something like this in the first example, we have the base graph y equal 3 exponent x. Now we are supposed to see the effect of either one of those coefficients on the transform function, which is given by y is equal to 3 exponent x minus 4. We are supposed to find the asymptote domain and range. Now, if we want to sketch the graph, we can use table of values as before and do it. But since we are talking about transformation, we better use all the factors involved, meaning A, B, H, and K, and then find the mapping notation and then use the new table of values. So, for this example, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the base function y equal 3 exponent x. So from here, I know that my table of value, when x is 0, y is 3 exponent 0, which is 1. When x is, let's say, 1, y is 3 exponent 1 is 3. When x is 2, y is 3 exponent 2, which is 9. So if I plot this one, I'm going to get when x is 0, y is 1, which is going to be this point. When x is 1, y is 3, which is going to be this point. When x is 2, y is 9, which is going to be this point. Now, if I use smooth curve, and connect them together you will see a graph like this one now let's consider the transform graph 
Remember that the transformed function in general for a base 3 is going to be y is equal to a 3 exponent b times x minus h plus k. Now looking at these numbers, you can see that a is 1 since the coefficient of x is in the transform function here is 1 then I can easily see that b is 1 h is 4 because the formula is automatically negative h and k is 0 so this tells me that the mapping notation is x and y becomes 1 over b bx which is 1 over 1 x plus h h is 4 and a y which is going to be 1 times y plus k which is 0 this is equal to the same as x plus 4 and y this means that the table of values that I had before becomes the following table when x is 0 in the base then I'm going to use uh, this expression here, 0 plus 4 is 4. When x is 1, then 1 plus 4 is 5. When x is 2, then 2 plus 4 is 6. Now I'm going to use the same technique for y. And it, it, you can see that y does not change in the mapping notation, so I'm going to write 1, 3, 9. So this means that the new graph becomes when x is 4 y is 1 when x is 5 y is 3 over here and when x is 6 y is 9 which is going to be about here so this means my new graph looks like this one this means that there is a shift of 4 units to the right now the asymptote as you can see in the base one was x-axis this line which is y equal to 0 on the transform function which is this one the asymptote is, stays the same so it's going to be the same line y equal to 0 the domain if you look at the base function the domain was x values in R in the transform function you can see that the domain also stays at x equal to r so the domain is x in r for the transform function the range you can see that all the values positive y values except 0 are the valid range values so I can say range is y in r and y greater than 0 the next example we have y equal 3 exponent x minus 2 again you can see from the transform function here that a is equal to 1 b is equal to 1 h is 2 and k is equal to 0 now the table of values for the base function the base function remember is y is equal to 3 exponent x if x is 0 is going to be 1 if x is 1 3 exponent 1 and remember I'm, I'm trying to come up with the table of values for the base function not the transform when x is 1 is 3 when x is 2 is 9 now the mapping notation is 1 over a which is 1 over 1 which is 1 so 1 times x is x plus h and b times y which is 1 times y which is y plus k which is 0 so my new table of value becomes now I plug this value equal to 0 here 0 plus 2 is 2 then I plug 1 1 plus 2 is 3 then I plug 2 2 plus 2 is 4 and the y does not change so it becomes 1 3 9 so my new graph becomes when x is 2 y is 1 
when x is 3, y is 3, when x is 4, y is 9. It becomes a graph like this one. Now, the asymptote again is going to be the line y equal to 0, which is the x-axis. The range is going to be, the domain is going to be x in R, because there is no restriction on x. And the range is going to be y in R, but y has to be positive and also not equal to 0, because y equal to 0 is the horizontal asymptote. So y has to be greater than 0. The next example we have y equal to 3 exponent x plus 1 plus 3. Again, if you look at the com compare this transform function, this one, with the base function, which is y equal to 3 exponent x, you can see that a is still 1, b is 1 because the coefficient of x is 1, h now is negative 1 because the formula is x minus h and here is plus 1 so h is negative 1 and k is equal to 3 so I can say that my mapping notation becomes x and y becomes 1 over 1 1 over a times x which is x plus h which is x minus 1 and it's going to be a times y, a is 1, so it's going to be y plus 3. Now this means that if my table of values for the base function, let's give values to x. If x is 0, then 3 exponent 0 is 1. If x is 1, 3 exponent 1 is 3. If x is 2, 3 exponent 2 is 9. Now, uh, I can go ahead and plot the base function 2. I can say when x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 3. When x is 2, y is 9, which is this one. Now I can plot this one with a graph like this. Now, using the mapping notation I got here, I can convert this one for the transform function. When x is 0, I put it back in this equation. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. When x is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. When x is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. Now I'm going to use these y values in this equation. I'm going to say when y is 1, 1 plus 3 is 4. When y is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. When y is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12. Now I'm going to go and plot this one. When x is negative 1, y is 4, which is going to be this point. When x is 0, y is 6, which is going to be this point. When x is 1, y is going to be 12, which is going to be off the graph, which is somewhere around here. Now my Now my graph is going to look something like this graph. If you notice that my graph now gets close to the line y equal to 0 here, but it never touches it. This means that our asymptote, which was y equal to 0, has been shifted up three units so now it becomes y equal to 3 so the horizontal asymptote now is y equal to 3 now our domain stays the same which is going to be x in r because there is no restriction on x and our range is going to be y in r but now all the y values they have to be greater than 3 the next example is the base function for exponent x and the transform function for exponent 2x. Again, 
we are going to find the table of value for the base function we are going to say when x is 0 x is 1 and x is 2 when x is 0 then 4 exponent 0 is going to give us 1 4 exponent 1 is going to give us 4 and 4 exponent 2 is going to give us 16 now if we plot this function we see that when x is 0 y is 1 when x is 1 y is 4 when x is 2 y is going to be off the chart which is going to be somewhere around there and our graph is going to look something like this now for the transform function which is this one if we compare it with the general one you can see that a is equal to 1 b is equal to 2 because remember that we have b times x minus h in the exponent so b is going to be 2 h is going to be 0 because this is 2x I can write 2x as 2 times x minus 0 and our k is going to be also 0 because there is nothing added to here I don't have any addition here so the mapping notation becomes 1 over b which is 1 over 2x plus h which is 0 and 1 times y which is 1 times y which is 1 y plus k which is 0 now I'm going to apply 1 over 2x to the x values here so the new table of value becomes when x is 0 x is 0 1 over 2 times 0 is 0 when x is 1 1 over 2 times 1 is 1 over 2 when x is 2 2 over 2 is 1 and y does not change so it becomes 1 4 and 16 so now I'm going to have when x 0 y is 1 which is the net the same point when x is 0 0.5 y is 4 so it's going to be here now and when x is 1, y is 16, which is going to be somewhere around here. So now my graph is going to look something like this. Now, as you can see, the line y equal to 0, which is the x-axis, still is the horizontal asymptote your domain is going to be x in R and that's it because there is no restriction on x values and the range is going to be y in R but y has to be greater than 0 the only difference between this graph and the base graph is that this one has been compressed by a factor of 1 over 2 In the next example, we have y equal negative 2 times 4 exponent x. Again, compare this graph with the base function 4 exponent x. You can easily see that a is negative 2, b is 1, h is 0, and k is 0. So our mapping notation becomes... 1 over b which is 1 over 1 x x plus h which is 0 and a y which is negative 2 y plus k k is 0 so it's negative 2 y the table of value for the base function 4 exponent x remember y equal 4 exponent x is our base function when x is 0 4 exponent 0 is 1 when y is 1 is 4 exponent 1 is 4 when y is 2 4 exponent 2 is 16 so this means that our graph the base function becomes when x is 0 is 1 when x is 1 it becomes 4 and when x is 2 it becomes 16 again it's going to go off the graph which is going to be the point shown here so now if I connect them with a smooth curve 
I'm going to get a graph like this one. Now, for the transform function, I'm going to use the mapping notation here to apply it to this table of values. When x is 0, as you can see the mapping notation, x doesn't change. So we're going to write 0, 1, 2 here. But our y values are going to be multiplied by negative 2 because of the mapping notation. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, negative 2 times 16 is negative 32. So when x is 0, y is negative 2. When x is 1, y is negative 8. And when x is 2, y is negative 32, which is going to be, let's say, somewhere around here. Then our graph would become something like this graph. Now if you compare it with the base function graph you can see that it has been reflected on the x-axis and the reason is that negative 2 here and also it has been stretched by a factor of 2 because of the 2 here. Now the horizontal asymptote is still x-axis which is going to be y equal to 0 the domain nothing is changed so it's x in R because all the x values are acceptable and the range is going to be the same y in R and this time y has to be less than 0 because all the negative values for y are acceptable here in the next example, we have y equal 4 exponent negative 1 over 2. Again, compare this one with the base function y equal 4 exponent x. You can see a is 1, b is negative 1 over 2, h is 0, and k is 0. So this means that if the table of value for the base function, if we assume 0, 1, 2, when x is 0, it's 1, when x is 1, it's 4, and x is 2, is 16, this becomes to the new one using the mapping notation. But the mapping notation is xy becomes 1 over b which is 1 over negative 1 over 2, which is negative 2y plus h, uh, x, sorry, plus h, h is 0, comma, a, y, a is 1, so it becomes 1, y, plus k, which is 0. So our mapping notation becomes negative 2x and y. So the new one, I multiply every x value by negative 2 here. So 0 times negative 2 is 0, 0 times negative, zero t uh, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. For y, nothing changes, so it stays at 1, 4, and 16. So if you want to plot it, we're going to get 0 is 1. So when x is 0 is 1, when x is negative 2, y is 4. When x is negative 4, y is 16, which is going to be somewhere around here. So this means that our new graph is going to be something like this graph. And remember that our base function was here. When x is 0, y is 1, which is the same point. When x is 1, y is 4. And when x is 2, y is 16, which is going to be somewhere around here. So our graph was something like this one. If you compare the base graph with the transform one, you can see that it has been reflected about the y-axis. And also, it has been 
stretched along the x-axis and the reason is because of negative 1 over 2 now again the horizontal asymptote is the line y equal to 0 the domain is x in r there is no restriction and the range is y in r and y has to be greater than 0 all these values here in the next example we are supposed to graph the function y equal negative 2 exponent 2 times x minus 3 plus 5 just by looking at the equation we can see that our a is negative 1 our b is equal to 2 our h is 3 and our k is 5 so the mapping notation becomes x y 1 over b which is 1 over 2 times x plus h and a y which is negative y plus k so the base function which is y equal to 2 exponent x when x is 0 2 exponent this is our base function when x is 0 2 exponent 0 is 1 when x is 1 2 exponent 1 is 2 when x is 2 2 exponent 2 is 4 when x is 3 2 exponent 3 is 8 now applying the mapping notation on this table of values every x is going to be multiplied by half and then add 3 to it so 0 times half is 0 plus 3 is 3 1 times half is 0 0.5 plus 3 is 3.5 2 times half is going to give me 1 plus 3 is 4 3 times half is 1.5 plus 3 is 4.5 our y value are going to be multiplied by negative 1 and add 5 to it so all these y values I'm going to multiply by negative 1 and add 5 to it so negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 plus 5 is 4 negative 1 times 2 is negative 2 plus 5 is 3 negative 1 times 4 is negative 4 plus 5 is 1 and negative 8 plus 5 is negative 3 so our function is going to look like this one when I plot it when x is 3 y is 4 when x is 3 y is 4 so it's going to be this point when x is 3.5 y is 4 uh, y is 3 so it's going to be this point when x is 4 y is 1 so it's going to be this point when x is 4.5 y becomes negative 3 now if I connect these points with a smooth curve I'm going to get a graph like the following now if you look at this one the line y equal to 5 which is represented by this constant is our horizontal asymptote so horizontal asymptote is y equal to 5 our domain as usual is x in r because there is no restriction and our range is y in r but all the y values which are less than 5 the next example we have the current in a circuit given by it is equal to point 0.9 times 1 minus 10 exponent negative 0.044t the first question is what is the appropriate domain for the function modeling the current since the independent variable is t here and t has to be positive then we can say that the domain is equal to t in r and t can be greater than or equal to zero because time can't be negative the second part of the question says what is the current in the circuit after two seconds so I have to evaluate the function at 
two. So I two is zero point nine one minus ten exponent negative zero point zero forty four times two. If you use your calculator, this is about point seventeen amps. Now the question is asking what is the current after 5 seconds. So I can say that I5 is 0 0.9 times 1 minus 10 exponent negative 0 0.044 times 5. If you use your calculator this is approximately 0.36 amp. The last part of the question says Describe what is happening to the current over the chosen domain. Remember their domain was t in r and t greater than or equal to zero. Now, if we look at the equation again, the equation is 0 0.9, 1 minus 10 exponent, negative 0 0.044 t. Now, let's expand this one. We're going to get 0 0.9 minus 0 0.9 times 10 exponent negative 0 0.044 t which is the same as negative 0 0.9 times 10 exponent negative 0 0.044 t plus 0.9 now looking at this one and comparing with the general form of a transform function i can say that a is negative 0.9 b is negative 0 0.044 h is 0 and k is 0 0.9 let's see what will happen to the base function again roughly I'm going to plot the base function the base function is going to be 10 exponent t so it's going to be something like this this is my base function now because of a which is negative here I have to reflect this one about the x-axis so my graph is going to roughly look like this one then 0.9 it means that I have to compress it along the y-axis by 0.9 which I'm not going to do anything the graph roughly looks like the dotted line then because of 0.9 here for k I have to move this guy, this graph, 0.9 amps up. Again, I don't care how it looks. So, assuming that it has already been moved up. Now, because of this negative here, this means that my dotted graph is going to be reflected about the y-axis. So, the graph is going to look like something like let's say this now again I am just talking about the rough graph how it looks because based on this one I can answer this question if I look at the rain I mean the domain now remember the domain again is t greater than or equal to zero if I look at the t greater than or equal to zero, meaning every value on the t axis to the right, you can see the function, if I walk here, as I explained in the class, if I walk along the graph, I can see that my y values are increasing. So the function is increasing. That's the first point. Now, what about the rate of change of the function? Let's see what exactly is rate of change if you remember from grade 9 rate of change was called slope slope now since you have already learned about the tangent to the line is the tangent to the line remember the slope of a perpendicular line is undefined which we can call infinite and the slope of a horizontal line is zero if you look at the slope of a tangent line as we go along the curve Okay, if I draw this, uh, the slope to this graph here, you can see that we start with some value of rate of change, and as we go along, finally we get to horizontal, which is like this. So we start with a value, and then we end up with zero. 
So this means that the rate of change is decreasing. So again, the graph is increasing, but the rate of change is decreasing.